Okay, na? if there are any queries as far as returns are concerned, please make a note. At the end, we will discuss. Okay, na? whatever uh, possible solutions are available, we will see them, we will discuss them. So, this is E-Wable. E-Wable stands for electronic wable. Okay, so we will discuss about what is uh, the basics of E-Wable introduction. We will see what are the legal provisions and how to generate it also see. And what are the other points, general points, mission response relating to generation of E-Wable, we will discuss. Introduction. You see, earlier, you have a wable. Each state has its own procedure for generation of wables. Uh, you have to get the blank wable book from the commercial tax department and you have to issue. And that you have to show in the check post or wherever the officer checks. And the wable copies are collected by them and they send it to the department. They will compare. That was the process, isn't it? So different states have different procedures, different uh, formats. It was very difficult. What happens? First you generate the e-wable, then we will capture, department will capture the details, isn't it? Department will police uh, everywhere, on the road, at the border, everywhere. Now, you capture the details, self-declaration model. That means, from departmental policing model to, we have moved to self-declaration model. You are declaring the details in your e-wable, just we will only verify whether they are correct or not, isn't it? Before moving to the goods itself, before starting the transportation itself, you are capturing the details. This e-wable stands for electronic wable. Section 68 of the CGST Act deals with uh, mandates that uh, e-wable has to be generated. It doesn't say e-wable, it says that the documents prescribed have to be carried with the conveyance. So what are the documents prescribed? That is in rules 138, 138A, B, C and 138D. These, these are the rules that prescribe various documents and processes relating to e-wable, okay? And who has to generate e-wable? That is also says that document or number to be carried by the carrier. This, that means e-wable copy, physical copy you can carry or number you have to carry. There is no need that you have to mandatorily carry the physical form. So, that, uh, to generate the e-wable, that e-wable ust.gov.in website, uh, website is available, developed by NIC and that portal is notified by notification 9 of 2018 central tax. Okay. So, what are the objectives of the e-wable? It prevents evasion of tax. Now, nationwide, we have only single e-wable. Earlier, we have several different, different e-wables for each of the states. Okay. Hazel-free movement, no check, nothing is checked on the road. A check post, your vehicle is not stopped for more than 30 minutes. Verification is easy, very easy. If you enter the uh, e-wable number in our mobile or if you send the SMS or in the um, website, we can easily find out whether it is genuine or not. We can tally the invoice carried by the transporter. So it is very user friendly. If you are familiar with, uh, to most of you, it is very user friendly, this e-wable system and compared to GST, GST still some people are facing difficulties, but e-wable is very user friendly, easy to generate the e-wable. The system itself will check uh, the data entered by you, whether you have entered the correct GSN number of yourself or your um, recipient. You can create your own master customers, recipients, the suppliers, or products also. If you have 100, 300 products, it's very difficult to every day enter these products in the UABLE. You can easily select. If you maintain the masters, you can easily select the uh, product from the list. Similarly, you have to enter the uh, address of the customer every day. Instead of entering the address every day, you maintain the master, you can easily select that. Okay. Dashboard is personalized. When you log into the system, it will tell what are the pending tasks, what are the you will be allotted to you, something like that. Monitoring is also very easy. When did you create the UA bill, where is it, whether it was received by the supplier, the customer or not. So, multiple modes are available. What are the multiple modes we will see as we move on. So, you can manage the sub-users also. Sub-users means you have factory in Hyderabad, you have branch in Mumbai, you have branch in Chennai. So for uh, the supplies made from Mumbai and Chennai also you have to make uh, UA bills which is very difficult. So you can generate sub-users, you can create sub-users at Chennai and Mumbai and you can see what are they doing. Whether they are doing it properly, you can monitor them. How many UA bills they are generating, how many UA bills that were accepted, something. No, no, India, anywhere in India. G 
జస్ట్ మన ఓకే ఓకే విత్న్ ద స్టేట్ ఇస్ సార్ మేబీ ఐ థింక్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు చెక్ వన్ సెకండ్ జస్ట్ మార్పవచ్చు సో ఇట్ విల్ జనరేట్ యూనిక్ నెంబర్ ఫర్ ఈచ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఈవే బిల్స్ ఫర్ ఈచ్ ఆఫ్ ద ఈవే బిల్స్ ఇట్ విల్ జనరేట్ యూనిక్ నెంబర్ సేమ్ నెంబర్ విల్ నాట్ బి జనరేటెడ్ ఫర్ ఎనీ సెకండ్ ఈవే బిల్ so it will give the alerts through sms also to the supplier for customers and transport also quick response code is available on the ev bill easily we can we need a gst number also if you scan that you will get the detail okay these are the benefits traders need not visit the tax offices clear used to visit commercial tax offices sometimes two two times three times also this um, suppliers use to make visits to commercial tax department similarly faster delivery because there is no waiting time people are waiting for days or so days together also in check post which i bought a check post now you need not wait so revenue growth will be more than normal more than normal because the evasion is very less now evasion is very less now self policing by the traders traders give the identification of the buyer who also has the account what happens once and the supplier let us say and the supplier and he is a customer once a generic give a bill that means our supplier goes to him he has to account for those goods there is no alternative to account for the goods that's what that's what traders themselves are self policing there is no need for the department to verify whether he has entered those goods as uh, inputs or input services inputs into his accounts or not the eu bill system is environment friendly one of the estimates says every day almost 50 tons of paper we are using earlier in the eu bill system now we need not take print out of the eu bill eu bill if you give the number that is enough so database is accurate there is no uh, difference if i supply 100 items he need to enter the figure again isn't it the system will take the 100 he cannot enter 50 or 75 or 150 you will more credit so officials are also saved monota every day they used to collect thousands of web bills they used to compare with their issue registers now that monotons work need not be done everything is uh, available online it's very easy to analyze the online data okay so scope for corruption is also reduced it not say eliminated reduced okay so using this data gst1 can be automatically generated i don't know whether that facility is available right now or not in the uav system that is also intended huh it's not working that's what some people told Uh, it will be done. It will be done. It's only beginning now. It's only one area is very small in, in this type of magnitude. magnitude. Okay. okay. So, we'll see the legal provision. Section 68 mandates that the transporter, the person carrying the goods, have to carry certain documents, prescribed documents. The documents are prescribed under these rules. 138 says the documents have been generated before commencement, commencement of the transportation of the goods. Yes, yes, documents and devices to be carried. What are the documents and devices? Devices means RFID device is also intended. That will be implemented very soon. So that is also mandated in section 130, rule 138A. So 138B allows the department officer to verify the documents and conveyance. Whereas 138C allows inspection of verification of the goods. 138B is dealing with documents and conveyance, whereas 138C is for verification of the goods. Okay? so this 138d deals with facility of uploading information regarding details of vehicle if a vehicle if an officer detains a vehicle for more than 30 minutes we can go to you can go and log into the ua bill website and uh, register your vehicle that will go to the higher officers so notification 15 is a no, this is ct means central tax notification uh, it prescribes that uh, the 1st april is the date from which ua bill has to be you will be has to come into force as far as interstate movement is concerned okay this circular 41 deals with the detention procedure verification procedure by the interception verification of the goods conveyance document by the department officer that is ha huh? only for that they are also they also need it na in fact what is the procedure what is the, what is the procedure required by the so originally intend to be Uh, implemented from february 
18, February 2018, whereas it, it started in 1st April and uh, the 15th June, before the 15th June all the states have implemented for the interstate movement. So how to do that? There are four stakeholders, supplier, recipient, that is customer, transporter and the officers. These are the four stakeholders in EU bill system. Modes of generation of EU bill. I told you, you know, there are different modes of EU bill generation. One is web, website through Android app. Bulk generation tool is also available that can be downloaded and generated. Through SMS also it can be generated. Site to site integration. The site to site integration means the condition is you have to generate not less than 1000 invoices per day. In that case, you can directly connect to the UABL system and the UABLs are generated by the system itself. You need not enter the details again. What are details you enter for invoice generation that will be taken and generated. So GST and SUDA providers software also you can use. These are the different modes of facilities available for generation of UABL. Regular taxpayers you have to register by entering your GST number. Once you enter your GST number, it will give the OTP number. You enter that allow you to create your username and password, then you can start using that username and password. In case of unregistered transporters, you see, unregistered person also has to generate unregistered transporters. There are certain transporters who are registered with the department, so they can use their GSTN to generate, make use of this website. If they are not registered with the department, they can uh, do a process called enrollment. They also they have to give their PAN number or other details. PAN is mandatory, PAN is mandatory, then uh, OTP will be generated. And uh, you have to enter your business details and you, ultimately you can create username and password. The sequence of events, first you have to log into the system, you register yourself, then part A of the EV, EWB form, EWB form 1 is there, in that form you have to fill part A and then part B. Part B is the transporter details. Transporter will enter the part B details. Part A consists of transaction details, invoice details. So who will generate, how it is generated, when is needed? Who generates any in relation to supply or other than supply also? Some of the clearances, they are not supplies as per the CGST Act. Even in those cases, if the value is more than 50,000, you have to generate new bill. For example, I am purchasing a mobile phone costing, let us say, 70,000 rupees. I am not registered with the department. Still, I have to carry e-way bill because its cost is more than 50,000. Very simple. You are purchasing a car and going, driving that car. Then also you have to generate e bill. Like that. So that's what they say. Other than, for reasons other than, that is not supply. As far as the CGST technology is concerned, it is not supply. But still you have to generate e bill. If I am purchasing from an unregistered person, I am registered with the department, I am purchasing from an unregistered person, the uh, value of the consignment is more than 50,000, then also it is my responsibility, it is the responsibility of the customer to generate EV bill, not the supplier. Okay? There are two parts. The part A is filled by the person responsible for movement of the goods. The part B is filled by the transporter in general. Okay? When the consignment value is more than 50,000, it has to be generated. There are certain exceptions, we will see them. Okay? So we have seen what is the, we have to see the consignment value is 50,000, but what is consignment value? Consignment value is value declared in the invoice plus taxes minus value of the exempted goods. That is the consignment value. Okay, who can furnish the information? As far as rule 138, one is concerned, consignor or consignee, who causes, who is the reason for movement of the goods? So customer also can generate the if he is the reason for movement of the goods. If you go to the first provision, the transporter can also generate on the authorization by the supplier, registered person. Registered person means maybe customer also. The supplier is not registered, customer is registered on his authorization. Second provision, this courier agency or e-commerce operator. This is also, they said, on authorization is concerned. But how do we know that whether the transport is authorized or not? There is no need for that uh, knowledge. Once it is the data entered by the transporter, we'll take it that the department will take it that he is authorized by the supplier or the customer, whoever it may be. So principal or job worker can generate it. So UA bill is mandatory. If once, one second we recall the data. UA bill is mandatory if the value of consignment is more than fifty thousand. Interstatement of interstate movement of handicrafts. You see, 
uh, handicrafts, most of the handicrafts are exempted from GST. But even in those cases, if the movement is interstate, we have to generate EVB. And interstate movement of goods. In case of interstate movement of goods, there is no need for 50,000. Even for the, the consignment value of less than 50,000, we have to generate EVB. It is optional. If the value is less than 50,000, you can generate. If you want, you can generate. This is not mandatory. Unregistered person also can generate the UA bill if you want. Similarly, see, um, normal, in normal course, from the place of supplier to the transport office or from the place of transport office to the customer, is less than 50, 50 kilometers, there is no need for, there is no need for um, UA bill. Isn't it? So, but if you want, you can generate. It is option available to you. And if you talk about the market, you can talk about the market, you can talk about the market, you can talk about the market. If the consignor or consignee has not generated the EVA bill, it is the responsibility of the transporter to generate the EVA bill. If he also doesn't generate the EVA bill, he will be made responsible and consignment will be detained. He cannot move the goods without EVA bill. Transporter cannot move the goods without EVA bill. You see, if the goods are transported on own conveyance, hired conveyance or public transport like RTC bus, then the EVA bill has to be generated before commencement of the transport, before commencement of the movement. If the movement is in rail, air or vessel, it can be, EVA bill can be generated after commencement of the movement also. However, railways will not deliver the goods to you unless you produce the EVA bill to them, in case of railways. Okay, this is the home page of the GST website. They are changing it. This is the first login sheet, username, password and this capture code you will enter and login. This is the initial screen. So the submenu you have, this here, you see. The EVA bill, generate new generate bulk that means you have to use that bulk generation tool if you have so many invoices you can use this bulk generation tool and you need not generate individual EVA bills okay vehicle number you can update of course you will see one by one of course and this is the main screen you see wherever red marks are there the data has to be mandatorily entered we will see what is the data mandatorily entered uh, as we move on and this is called path A this all cont this contains the data of the consignor Consignee, product details, their value, rate of duty, all those details it will contain. These are the transported details. Part B is transported details. Transaction details, transportation details. Okay. These are the mandatory. HSN code is mandatory. Two digit HSN code is mandatory for the consignments whose value is less than 5 crores. If the value of the consignment is more than 5 crores, you have to go four digit HSN code. Four digit HSN code. Okay. So document number, document number on the degree, you can either tax invoice number, bill of supply, delivery chalan or bill of entry. Anything. In case of imported goods, you, are, you have paid import duty at the port and you are bringing the goods to your factory. Then also you have to generate EVA bill. In that case, you don't have the invoice number. You can enter the bill of entry number. Bill of entry number you have to enter. Okay. The transport document number, as far as uh, uh, transport document number is concerned, you can enter goods receipt number issued by the lorry office. Or railway receipt number issued by the railway department, airway bill number in case of import through airway and bill of loading in case of import through ships. Place of delivery shall be PIN code. PIN code has to be mandatorily mentioned because PIN code will be useful to measure the distance exactly. If I mention some area name, some village name, distance is difficult. If you enter the PIN code, it will exactly calculate the distance. This is the EVA bill format, QR code, these are the EVA bill number and the validity period and this is the details of customer and then value is there and nature of supply. Then these are the part B. Vehicle number, enter date, entered by. Who has entered? This is the validity date. 14th they started and 17th the validity. We will see what is the validity period also. So this is the UA bill without vehicle number you see. This is not valid. 
this way this uh, ua bill is not valid this is a consolidated ua bill for example a transport is carrying let us say 10 consignments you need not carry all that 10 ua bills you can enter the details of individual ua bill numbers in the consolidated ua bill and he can carry the consolidated ua bill itself you need not carry the consolidated the individual ua bills you see these are all the individual ua bill numbers if the department officer wants to verify, he can enter this UAB numbers and verify. This is the entry screen, this is the entry screen and this is the actual consolidated UAB screen. You can see the value and destination, destination, different destination, okay? And the UAB has to be assigned by the supplier or consigner to a transporter for entering part B details, part B details. Uh, the supplier enters the supplier or recipient whoever is causing the movement of goods enter the details in part A and assign the UAB to a transporter. He can assign it to another transporter, reassign it to another transporter, but before accept before it, it is accepted by the transporter. Once transporter accepts and enters vehicle details, the supplier or cons the consignee cannot assign the UAB to another transporter, but transporter can assign it to another transporter. One transporter can enter uh, send the UAB to another transporter. The second transporter will update the data. Transporter vehicle data. Vehicular data. The conveyance can carry the copy of the UAB or at least the UAB number along with the documents. Is clear document, supply documents, invoice number or delivery invoice, delivery challenge or bill of supply. That has to be carried along with that. He can carry a copy of the UAB or at least a number of the UAB. So in those circumstances, 138.4 lists what are the circumstances under which we need not generate UA bill. Where the goods being transported are specified in Annex 2 Rule 138.4, 138.4 in Sub Rule 14, we will see what, are the, what is the list of goods. In those cases, we need not generate UA bill. Goods are transported in non-motorized, bullock car, rickshaw, cycle, in those cases, they need not generate UA bill. Value is more. Even the value is more. Okay. Transporting import cargo from port, airport, air cargo complex, from those places to inland container depot or container freight station, if the goods are being taken to those places because they are, they, are, uh, they are not clear to the customer, they are not clear to the import rate. They will be cleared at the place of ICD or CFS. So till they come to, till they reach ICD and CFS, they need not generate evil. So the, each and every state, they have their own CGST Act and CGST rules. So under their CGST, they, in their state GST rules, under Rule 138, Sub Rule 14, they can notify some of the areas where they say that there is no need for generation of UA bill. State that uh, that uh, power lies with the state governments. In those areas also, there is no need for generation of UA bill. The goods transported are alcoholic liquor and five petrol products. Five petrol products are petrol, diesel, uh, aviation turbine fuel, crude petroleum, and natural gas. In those five, in those five uh, supplies also, there is no need for generation of UAB number. These are the goods listed in Annex 2, Rule 138, Sub Rule 4. So, liquefied L LPG, there is no need for generation of UAB number. Kerosene meant for PDS, public distribution system, postal baggage. Pearls, jewelry, currency, the personal used personal effects, not new. Used personal effects, there is no need to be able. But I am purchasing sofa of uh, worth two lakhs generated because it is a new generated evil. Okay? So these are the goods for which there is no need for evil. Other cases are goods being transported specified in schedule two, notification two of two thousand seven. Notification two of two thousand seven is is general notification, general exemption notification. Those goods which are exempted under notification number 2 of 2017, central tax rate for supplying those goods, for carrying those goods, there is no need for generation of UA bill. Again, this is small confusion here. Schedule 3 to the central, Ex central GST Act, some activities are listed. In those cases also, they say that there is no need for generation of UA bill. But the thing is, all the activities mentioned in Schedule 3 are services only. There are no goods. But I don't know why they have included that provision. So, you see. 
again, 7 of 2017, 7 of 2017 deal with CSD, Canteen Supplies Department, Defence Canteens. Canteen Supplies Department to their unit run canteens or other persons, the goods will be moving. So in those cases also, there is no need, there is no need for generation of bill. If the goods are being transported by moved by the defence formation, if the goods are being transported under customs bond, in those cases also there is no need for generation of EU bill. Where the concern is central government, state government or any local authority like municipality or panchayat for transportation of goods by train. Need for. If the private person transport goods by train, you have to generate EU bill. But if it is transported by the government, there is no need for EU bill. Empty cargo containers, no need for EU bill. Distance from the place of consigner to the way bridge is less than 20 kilometers. Similarly, distance from the place of concern to the transporter's office or from transporter's office to the consignee's place is less than 15 kilometers, 50 kilometers, there is no need for generation of EUA bill. But delivery challenge is required and part A of the EUA bill is required in this case. Part A of the part B need not part B need not be mentioned. Part B will be filled by the transporter after reaching the goods to his office. For example, I'm Sending, a, uh, sending two boxes to SRMT office. The distance from my office to SRMT is let us say 20 kilometers. I need not to generate the UAB, but I have to fill part A. Part A to fill, part B will be filled by SRMT. Okay. So goods and cargo from Nepal and Bhutan, the transit cargo from Nepal and Bhutan, there is no need for. e seal consignments. Now the export consignments are e sealed by the uh, exporters. So in those cases also no need for UAB. Okay. So interception inspection, your vehicle may be intercepted by the department, those are briefly I have touched upon, so randomly we can verify your vehicles and commissioner will authorize it, commissioner or person authorized the commissioner will authorize the officers to intercept the vehicles, jurisdiction, place also they will decide and verification can be done through the website or SMS or we have a mobile app also, mobile app also we will verify that if any, if there is no deficiency, immediately after stopping the vehicle we will the invoice and the e bill. And if it is, if there is no problem, if you feel that there is no problem, we will allow the goods to be move, goods to be moved straight away. And vehicle, after stopping the vehicle, we cannot stop the vehicle for more than 30 days. Th 30, sorry, 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 30 days is, uh, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. If it is more than 30 minutes, you can log into the website and report a grievance. Okay. And if you fail to produce the document, Invoice and the EA bill number. We will re record a statement from you, and once we record a statement, we will uh, we'll also issue an order for verification of the goods or vehicle. So within 24 hours of the uh, stopping the vehicle, we will also report the data online. Within three days, we will complete the data. And if there is any if there is any problem, duty to be paid. If you pay the duty, we will allow the goods to be cleared. Or the goods are retained, you can give a bank uh, guarantee, security with bank guarantee, and then also goods will be re uh, released. If still, even after taking all these actions, if you are not paying the duty, paying the duty under section 30, 130 of CG Act, we can confiscate the goods and put them for auction. These are all the process. If we don't generate the bill, these are the consequences under section 122. It is a general section. 10,000 rupees or the uh, amount of GST on those goods, whichever is here, we will collect it in under section 129, we will retain the goods and seize the goods and 130, finally we will confiscate the goods and put them for auction for recovery of the GST. Not only goods, we can retain the vehicle as conveyance also. So there are certain other points we will see, one consignment, one document, one EV bill. You cannot generate one EA bill for multiple documents, isn't it? Not. And one invoice, multiple consignments, multiple EA bills. That means there is very big consignment, single consignment. You have generated one invoice only. But all the uh, entire consignment will not go to one vehicle. It will go into five vehicles, let us say. What, what you have to do is you have to generate one invoice, you have to take five Xerox copies, you have to certify them, you have to issue delivery chalans. One invoice will go with the last vehicle and vehicles 1, 2, 3, 4 you have to generate delivery chalons delivery chalons, copy of the invoice and also you have to generate separate EV bills for each of the vehicles you have to generate separate EV bills for each of the vehicles
So with the first four vehicles, you have to generate delivery challons, you have to um, give a copy of the, certified copy of the invoice and also you have to generate separate EV bills for each other vehicles. Though the consignment is one, invoice is one, you have to generate five EV bills if the consignment is going in five vehicles. So multiple documents, one EV bill is not possible. You have to generate separate EV bills for each of the doc each of the invoices. Once you generate EV bill, you cannot edit it, you cannot modify it. If there is an issue, you have to cancel that uh, EV bill and generate a new EV bill. Okay? So transportation details, part B can be updated any number of times. Part A cannot be modified. For example, you have sent the EV bill to a transporter, he entered the vehicle number, afterwards his vehicle breaks down, he cannot pass on that. So he can update the transportation details. He can enter another vehicle number and send the goods. If the part B is not filled, it is not valid for movement of the consignment. You have to mandatorily fill up part B also. So validity of the UAB starts from the time when you enter the part B. Validity doesn't start with the data, data entered in part A. So you all, you are all familiar with build to ship to models, na? There is a problem, uh, earlier there was some problem. So build to ship to model also, now there is a facility for generation of UA bill. In the UA bill, there is a uh, facility to enter dispatch from, bill from dispatch from, bill to ship to, all the addresses you can enter. All the addresses you can enter. So that facility is available in UA bill system, there is no difficulty. Okay? Build to ship to model. So multiple UA bills passing through transshipment from one place to another in different vehicles to reach destination. For example, SRM2 vehicle is going from Hyderabad to Vijayawada. It contains 20 consignments. It will carry 20 EV bills or single consolidated EV bill. Okay. From Vijayawada, part of the consignments, some consignments will go to Guntur, some consignments will go to Rajamandri, some consignments will go to Khammam. And some more consignments will be joined there. Again, he has to generate separate consolidated EV bills for different destinations. That is the transshipment. The facility is available. He need not carry the physical EV bills wherever he goes. He can generate single uh, consolidated EV bill. That is what it says. Consolidated EV bill can be generated for vehicle carrying multiple EV bill consignments. Okay, that is what we have discussed. And consolidated EV bill doesn't have any specific validity. The individual specific EV bills contained in that consolidated EV bills have their own specific separate validity periods. Isn't it? Like that. We cannot decide the uh, validity period from a uh, look at the from a glance at the consolidated DV bill number. This is built to ship to model. For example, the supplier is in Maharashtra, the recipient customer is in Karnataka. So from Maharashtra, this prime hardware who is in Karnataka orders and consignment with Marthi traders, who is also in Maharashtra. Prem Hardware doesn't know that these items are manufactured by Ganesh traders, but he knows that Marthi traders are supplying these goods. In turn, Marthi traders, he doesn't manufacture those goods. He will order Ganesh traders and ask him to supply the goods directly to Prem Hardware. This is built to ship to model. This Ganesh Hardware, Ganesh traders, builds Marthi traders and ships the goods to Prem Hardware. Both the details can be entered in the UA bill. Bill to, in the, in the bill, bill to place, he will enter the data details of Marthi traders and the ship to address, frame hardware address, details are given. Validity. Period of validity is counted from the time at which EV bill was generated. EV bill was generated means part B of the data is also, part B of the EV bill also, is also entered. From that period, it starts. And the uh, validity ends at the midnight of the subsequent day. For example, today at 5 o'clock we have generated EV bill and the distance is less than 100 kilometers. The EV bill is valid till tomorrow's midnight. Till tomorrow's midnight. Okay. Valid as EV bill is one day for every 100 kilometers in normal course. If the, cons if the uh, consignment is of, uh, the vehicle is of oversized vehicle, oversized vehicle means the size of the vehicle is decided under motor, Central Motor Vehicles Act, I think section 39 and the only dantla, no? So, so, if it is a oversized vehicle, the validity is 20 kilometers per day. Instead of 100 kilometers for a regular vehicle, that is 20 kilometers. 
So what is oversight vehicle? That is decided under that central motor vehicles rules. The recipient, customer can reject the EVA bill or consignment within 72 hours of the generation of the EVA bill or before the delivery, delivery of the goods, whichever is earlier. If the goods are not delivered within 72 hours, yes, he can cancel it, he can reject it. If he has not rejected, it is taken that he has accepted the goods. So there is no specific validity, as we discussed just before, there is no specific validity period for consolidated EVA bill. Validity depends on the specific EVA bills mentioned in the consolidated EVA bill. Okay. So generator the EVA, if, if I am generating the EVA bill, if I am the supplier, if I am generating the EVA bill, I can cancel the EVA bill within 24 hours. After 24 hours, I cannot cancel it. I cannot cancel. I, I am responsible for that. Okay. EVA bill cannot be cancelled if it has been verified in transit. I have generated the EVA bill, I have dispatched the goods. After half an hour, some department officer verified the, verified the EVA bill. The verification is um, recorded online. Now, even if it is within 24 hours, I cannot cancel the EVA bill. So you will be can be cancelled if the goods are not transported, if the invoice details and the goods transported, the, the details are not matching, in that case also you will can be cancelled. Party cannot be edited. So once it is uh, party is complete, once it is uh, assigned to the transporter, it cannot be modified. You can only cancel and generate new bill if there is any need for that. So cancellation also can be done by a common portal or you can go to the departmental facilitation center or a GST Suda provider, you can cancel that. Okay. Moment is moment caused by unreached person is deemed to be moment caused by the registered recipient. That means supplier is not the concern or is not registered, concern is registered, in such a case concern is responsible for generation of the EV bill because he is registered with the GST department, GST system. The EV bill with consignment should have the latest vehicle number. As I told you earlier. I started the movement, I generated the EVA bill, the transport end. The vehicle breaks down. He can change to he can change the goods to another vehicle and supply the goods. But he has to take care that the latest vehicle number is entered. If the latest vehicle number is not entered, the EVA bill is not valid. Like that he can modify the vehicle number any number of times, no problem. Within that but within the validity period. Validity period starts from the Time when the first vehicle number was entered first time. Like that, uh, we are discussing about the sub-users. We can create three sub-users for each other additional place. So, uh, SCs are asking for ten sub-users. Of course, we don't know whether the government will allow it or not. As of now, three sub-users can be created for each other additional place. So, once unique eviability number is generated, system informs that to the supplier, concerning and the transporter also. So quick response code is available, it is easy, we need to enter the data, you can scan that code and our entire data will, will be populated to our mobile. Anyhow, government is also thinking to integrate this system with RFID devices, that means lorry truck will have a RFID tag attached to that. Uh, the officers waiting on the road, they will have RFID readers, they can just read and send the vehicle easily. We need not take the documents, see, spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes like that. So general things, okay, everything is over. So that means on a single EVA bill, we can use multiple, multiple transportation like uh, truck, ship, train, and uh, aeroplane. On a single EVA bill, okay, the only thing we have to update the data. Okay. So how the transport knows that, okay, I'm the supplier, I assign the EVA bill. Immediately I log in, he, it will say that, okay, so and so has assigned this uh, EVA bill to you. You have to alert transport. Or else, you can go to a menu called EVA will assign to me for transport. There is an option in that. Similarly, there is an option called update vehicle number. In that generate GST number, he can give my GST number and he will know what are the EVA bills assigned to him. Of course, it's not much important to you. So, like that. Once we start it, the data is passed to the data center of the EVA bill website. Check post, check post means the officer waiting for verification. Like that. And you have to take care in this. Vehicle number format has to be uh, carefully maintained. For example, uh, the vehicle number is DEF234. We have to enter 0. So, 4 digit we have to enter. This is the format ABC1234. Like that. Different vehicles also, there are different systems are there. Different states are following different numbering systems. But you have to follow the sequence like this. 
basically wherever there are zeros we should not miss that for example this is the vehicle number 45 it enter two zeros the number number sequence has to be number length has to be maintained that way so wherever i go i make it a uh, customary to inform the participants as to what are the support systems available support systems extended by the department so the best support system is cbc website we have everything there all the acts rules notifications circulars and uh, all the handouts on different concepts released by the uh, government and faqs general faqs twitter faqs the same the sector uh, sectoral F faqs released by the government everything is available then this is the website for the filing of uh, uh, returns here you have user manual for all the process whether it is gstr1 gstr3b or gstr2 everything you have user manuals and it will also mention inform you what are the uh, dates due dates all these things are available and there is an app developed by the department cbc gst if you go to android play store you can download it it will give all the uh, acts rules notifications and uh, rates are also available everything is available in the mobile app you need not go to the system all the uh, come desktop or laptop system all the way and there is one more application called gst rate finder it is being updated you can say you can search any product for example if you are going to a footwear footwear shop you want to purchase footwear he has mentioned 28% gst rate will you pay you can go to this app you can check footwear rates you can find out so there is a recent application gst verify for example you are going to a restaurant but he is charging gst you can find out whether he is eligible to charge the gst or not by taking his gst number whether he is a composition dealer or he is a regular gst registered or not you can verify from this application and somebody report the this is very important selfservice.gstsystem.in this is the website any grievance you don't give any emails or don't contact them on mobile numbers if you go to this website and report your grievance immediately you will get the ticket number once ticket number is generated nobody can hide your grievance you will get the response people are getting because so many people have filed on my suggestion they got the response they got the solution so other system is we have so many offices in telangana where where spaces wherever you have gst office there is sava kendra and if you want to find out those numbers their contact numbers or email id please go to this website and helpline and commissioner you have phone numbers and email id of all the offices okay and in relation to that you have the help desk number this is the email id you can use these email id and put your queries and you will get the response so very briefly i covered returns and ewe bill system and any query is join for the interaction